In this screencast, we're going to have a look at the progress you should have made so far with your spreadsheet. So into the spreadsheet itself, and this is the progress that you need to have made. So let's have a look at each part of the, um, the workbook um, in a bit more detail. Before we do, um, I know it's been uh, a while since some of you have done um, spreadsheets that might have been not studied them since year 10 GCSE. And if you didn't take GCSE and um, ICT, then you might not have done them since year 9. So for that reason, I've put together a quick screencast on spreadsheets, just an overview really. You can access them via my blog at mrcockfieldict.co.uk. Look for the, for the post spreadsheets getting started. It's also tagged under spreadsheets as well. And have a quick look at, um, there's two tutorials, two screencasts. The first one is um, a recap of spreadsheets using some of the, um, the material from the Year 10 GCSE syllabus. Um, and also there's a quick overview here of the AICT spreadsheet task for 2014-15. So it'd be a good idea that before you go any further, if you haven't done so already, just quickly watch these screencasts. Okay, they just give you a bit more background. Um, be more beneficial. You can also access them via my YouTube channel. Um, if you go to YouTube, type in Mr. Botfield ICT. There's lots and lots of screencasts on here now, so I've started to put them into playlists. Um, and if you look for the playlist on um, spreadsheets getting started, um, there's two, two uh, screencasts in there for you as well. But back over to the spreadsheet. So what have we got? Well, this part of the spreadsheet um, will calculate the amount of hours that an employee has worked, their normal hours or their day hours. Um, it will also calculate the amount of overtime hours that they've worked. It will give us um, an overtime pay or a normal pay um, here. The overtime pay is over here. We have a gross pay, which is those drivers together, and we can work out deductions. And finally, the net pay, which is the amount of money this employee takes home. So let's dig a little deeper. Now your spreadsheet doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine, um, but you do need some of the same uh, data and, and titles and labels in here. So you can change your layout, but just remember that when I'm talking about cell references, if I'm referencing, let's take this formula here, if I'm referencing E9, okay, I'm talking about subtotaling or working out the time between the start uh, time and the finish time. Just make sure that your formulas um, have the correct cell references in them, otherwise you'll be using the formulas that I'm using and it's not going to work for you. Okay, so we'll start with the start time and the finish time. So under day hours, um, if you put a starting time, for example, 8 o'clock, a finish time for 2 o'clock, and we're going to calculate the difference between the two using this formula here. Okay. It would be a good idea, I think, if you had a pen and paper so that you can jot these formulas down. So the first formula we're going to look at and you're going to need is this one here. OK, so grab a pen, grab some paper and jot it down. It's equals INT, it's an integer, double open bracket. It's D9 minus C9, close the bracket, multiplied by 24, close the bracket. And what that formula will do is we'll take the finish time, we'll subtract the start time, and then with that value we'll multiply it by 24 to give us the amount of hours. Okay. So write the formula once, check that it works. Okay. Once you've done it, let's just delete these for a moment just to show you. Once you've done it, you can see how the spreadsheet's updated automatically there. Um, but once you've done it, click on the on the cell. And you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner of the active cell we've got this little triangle uh, or square hover over it you can see my cursor change and then drag down like that and that will copy the formula for you now going back if you've watched the theory um, powerpoint this is an example of relative cell referencing because you can see in the first instance i'm in row nine so i've got d9 minus c9 and as i drag down it updates to make it row um, 10, row 11, and so on. So copy the formula down. Once you've done that, you'll need to total the amount of hours which have been worked that week. That's under total hours. And the formula for this one is equal sum, open bracket, E9, colon, E15, close the bracket. So we're taking E9, E15, everything in between, and adding them together. 
Okay, so write this formula down and you can add this one in quickly. We can zoom in on that so you can have a quick look. It's equal sum, open brackets, E9, colon, E15, close the brackets. And that will total the amount of hours that your employee has worked that week. Once you've done this, okay, all you need to do, all this area here that I'm highlighting, is copy it. Okay, and I've just left a, a column here just for a bit of space. And I've pasted it over here as you can see. Now it should all automatically work. Okay, so these will be the day hours and this will be the overtime hours. And if you've copied it into the same place, then the formula here will automatically update. You can see it's adding those together there. Okay, next we're going to add the hourly rate and the overtime rate. Now I've put my hourly rate here. You don't have to, but remember your sum references will be different to mine. So I've put an hourly rate in of £10 an hour. Um, initially, go with figures which make it easy for you to check the max. So um, I'll give you an uh, example of that in a minute. But just for now, use um, ten pounds per hour. Now we need to calculate the overtime rate. Uh, remember, keep referring to the spec. It is important that you get to know the spec. Back on your Moodle um, coursework page, you've got the payroll spreadsheet and the payslip spreadsheet information. I think it's under payslip. Okay, and we can see the overtime rate is rate of pay times 1.5, so it's time and a half. Um, so the formula for your overtime rate is going to be equal sum open bracket A10 multiplied by 1.5, so it's hourly rate multiplied by 1.5. So jot that formula down and you can add that to your spreadsheet now. So we've got our hourly rate and we've got our overtime rate. This will now allow us to um, calculate our normal pay and our overtime pay. So our overtime pay is the hourly rate. So you just note the colours of the uh, formulas. The hourly rate multiplied by the total hours. So this employee has worked 42 hours multiplied by £10 an hour. We know um, his um, pay is going to be £420. And there it is. Okay. We'll do exactly the same for overtime pay. So we're going to do overtime pay multiplied by overtime rates. Let's just click on the formula there for you. Mine is equal sum open bracket. Notice the equal sum open bracket is a, is a reoccurring theme. Um, A13, so this time the sum reference of the overtime rate multiplied by I17, the sum reference for the total um, overtime hours worked. Okay, and that gives us um, £150. Go back to using numbers which we used to use. If you use ten pounds an hour, you can very very quickly calculate that the overtime rate at one point five times and a half is going to be fifteen pounds per hour. Um, it also makes it easy to calculate that forty two times ten is four hundred and twenty, and also uh, ten times fifteen is one hundred and fifty. So by using figures initially, which are easy for us to calculate, it just helps you spot any would be mistakes in your spreadsheets. And finally, this uh, this section, the gross pay is just subtotal of the normal pay plus the overtime pay. So if I click into there and you can have a look at the formula, okay, it's equal sum open bracket, I don't need to zoom in on that one. Um, normal pay plus overtime pay, and that gives you your gross pay. Now gross pay is the amount of money that you have earned so that your employer will pay you, but it's not the actual amount of money that goes into your bank accounts because you've got to have deductions. Now, everybody has to pay national insurance, income tax, and pension contributions, or most people do. Um, and in the spec, it gives us what those costs are. So we can see the national insurance deduction is taken from pay. You may assume that CT Productions employees pay national insurance as follows. 0% on the first £111, so they're paying £111 without paying any national insurance. Then anything um, earned after the 111 per week, they have to pay 12% national insurance contributions. Income tax, similar type of thing. Okay, income tax is based on income. You may assume that all CT production employees pay tax as follows. 0% on their personal allowance of 182 pounds per week, and then 20% on the remainder of the pay. So although the figures are different, the maths is the same. Okay, you've got a, an initial amount which is not, um, no national insurance or income tax is paid on and then we've got a percentage that we pay on after that 
And finally, pension. 1% of pay is paid as a workplace pension. So, back into the spreadsheet, I've created a little label down here called deductions. I'm going to create a list of deductions, and then I'm going to add my deductions up and take those away from direct pay, leaving me the net pay. Now, you'll notice I've done national insurance twice. Okay, the reason being is there's an easy way of doing it, a quick way, and there's a slightly longer way, um, slightly more complicated, but it's the correct and proper way of doing it. So I'm going to show you this one as an example first. This is a way that I don't want you to do it, but just in case you sort of see that you can take the shortcut, um, I want you to do it this way. So I'm very quickly going to show you this way first. Okay, so national insurance, um, just note the value, £55.08. And we're going to calculate that by using the formula equal sum open brackets E19, which is um, the gross pay, minus £111 multiplied by 0.12. So essentially it's gross pay minus 111, that's uh, the amount which is um, you don't have to pay contributions on, then multiplied by 0.12, which is decimal for 12%. So just, just note that formula. You don't need to write it down because you're not going to use it. Now the problem with using a formula like this is if, for example, the national insurance contributions change, the percentage, or the amount that you don't have to make contributions on, you could have this value in a spreadsheet lots and lots of times, and it's going to make it very, very difficult to update. So to get around that, what we're going to do is reference the um, 111 and the 12% um, 0.12 from a different workbook. If you look down here in the bottom left hand side of the screen, you can see I've got a, a worksheet called data. Looking at data, I've just quickly entered into the spreadsheet national insurance, so the national insurance is free, which is the amount you don't have to pay national insurance on. The national insurance percentage, 12%, 0.12. I've done the same for income tax, so the personal allowance of £182 a week, and then anything it earns after that is at 20%, okay, 0.2. And finally, pension. Um, all employees have to make a, or all CP Productions employees have to make a, a co contribution to a work based pension of 1%. So again, it's a decimal, that's 0.01. So this is where I'm going to take my data from. So if we look at this example, you can now see the difference in the formula. Okay, I'll show you very, very quickly. Okay, so with this time, we've got equal sum, open bracket, E19, which is the gross pay. But this time, we're going to take away the value from workbook data, or worksheet data, cell B2. Okay, now we've got the bracket around that bit, so we do that part of the sum first. Then after that, we're going to multiply that by a workbook data, but cell B3. So that's the 0.12. Okay, I'll actually do it so that you can see it being done. So just for a second, I'm going to delete this formula. And I'm going to type equal sum, open bracket, and I'm going to choose gross pay. So it's gross pay minus, so once I've clicked on minus, I'm then going to click on the data workbook, and it's going to be minus B2, the national insurance amount that we don't have to make a contribution on. And then I'm just going to close the bracket, and that's going to take us back to the Bolton timesheet workbook. There we are. So that's not finished yet, okay? If I click back into the cell, all I've done so far is gross pay minus the value, which is 111, from the data workbook. So on the end there, I'm going to add multiplied by clicking on data, and this time I'm going to click on to or into cell B3, which is the national insurance contribution, 12%. And again, press enter. Okay, and now we come back to the value here, 55 pounds and eight pence. Why have we done it like that? It is a little bit longer than this way, but um, if the national insurance contribution changes, then we can very, very quickly, I'll show you, go over to our data tab. And if national insurance changes for one person, it will change for everybody. So let's say national insurance contribution goes up to um, 20%. Um, so we'll change this value to 0 0.20, 20%. When we go back to the timesheet, 
we can now see that the value has changed. Like it's no longer 50 pounds um, and eight pence like it was before. It's now gone up to 9182. Um, if we want to change it back, we can just change it back here to 0 0.12, back in our timesheet, and it's back to 55 pounds, eight pence. So that's just an example of using it for one person. But if I had hundreds of employees in a, in a spreadsheet, I certainly wouldn't want to spend time or pay one of my employees time to go through changing this sort of data. If you want to put it in one place um, as a variable, you can change it once, and then these changes are reflected throughout the spreadsheet. That just leaves us income tax and pension. Now, the income tax is very, very similar to the national insurance. Um, the income tax allowance is £183, and the uh, tax after that payable is 20%. So we're going to follow the same process. If we have a quick look at this formula, um, I'm not going to do it, I'm just going to show you the formula and you, you've seen how I did the national insurance, so you can copy that process just using different cell references. So the formula for the income tax is equal sum open brackets. Let's um, zoom in up here. There we are. It's equal sum open brackets, so it's gross pay minus data B6. Okay, so that's the £182 weekly allowance. Note the bracket is closed, multiplied by data B7, which is the percentage. So essentially, what we've just done there is um, the gross pay minus £182 and then multiplied by 0 0.20 by the 20%. And finally, we've got the pension. Okay, now the pension is um, times by 1%, so 0 0.01, we can call quickly here. So we'll have a quick look at the formula. So equal sum open bracket gross pay, or E19 in my case, multiplied by the value of B9 in the data workbook, which you've just seen is 0 0.01. So you should now be, able to, now be able to calculate the national insurance the proper way. In fact, I'm going to delete that. There we are. So you can calculate the national insurance, you can calculate the income tax, and you can also calculate the pension. Now the last one you need to do is take the gross pay and deduct all the deductions to leave you with a net pay. And this is the amount of money that actually ends up in, in your bank account at the end of the month. So the formula for this one is, I'll just highlight it on there first for you and then I'll zoom in, is E19, so it's gross pay, minus E23, the national insurance contribution, minus E24, the income tax contribution, and minus E25, the pension payment contribution. I'll just zoom in on that for you so you can see that one in more detail. There we are, equal sum, open bracket, E19, minus E23, minus E24, minus E25. So you can now go ahead and um, produce and complete your, with this part of the spreadsheet. Once you've done this, um, this um, is the timesheet part done. So this gives us a timesheet for one employee to record their day hours and their overtime hours, how much gross pay they've earned, and then what their national insurance, income tax, and pension contributions are, leaving the employee with a net pay. So you can now go ahead and produce this part of the spreadsheet.